sciences. I know. What that? about poop sciences? By the way, welcome to Melon's Fruit Bowl. Today we're going to ask you questions. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us are going to answer them. She answered. She just, you know, didn't... By the way, we're eating chimichangas and drinking alcoholic tea. Welcome to the party. Well, some of us are drinking alcoholic tea. Some of us are just drinking tea. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I, I actually like this question, so I'm just going to start with it, and, and I expect you both to answer in turn. Um, you may fight to the death to determine who gets to go first. But if we're dead... Shush! Don't you question my lack of logic. Okay. <laughs> Why start now? Mm-hmm. Yes. We don't question. He has a book of questions. Yeah. Would you add one year... To your life, if it meant taking one year away from the life of someone in the world selected at random, would it matter if you were told whose life you had shortened? Like, like after the fact? Like, if I was if I was like, yeah, definitely, off that person early. And then they were like, oh, shit, no, you like killed, if you, you killed... No, like, if you took the year and then they're like, by the way, the person you took it from was Joel Lipschitz, who lives in New York City, you know. I'd be like, cool, he would have watched the train anyway. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess what what would the circumstances be that you would be taking a year from somebody else? Like, I mean, like my grandma lived to be a hundred, and I don't think I want to live to a hundred. But I'd that's like, why it's it's random. I'd be like, give my years away. Yeah, you know, but if you kill taken... a baby, then you're going to be a relative. Yeah, yeah and that's the thing is if you if you're talking about like someone who's 15 and going to have a horrible accident, but instead they die at 14 because you took a year of their life. Mm-hmm. See, I. I think I just want just the right amount of years. Just just the amount of years I'm going to I don't know that I would need another year. Yeah. Right? Like, you know, if, like, tomorrow, they were like, well, you you know, you're going to live, you're going to live however long you live. And if you take this deal, you'll get an extra year on top of that. Right? If that was the situation, I'd be like, eh, fuck it. Well, if take were, my chances. If they were saying, like, hey, by the way, you've got, you know, the big C, and you only have three months to live, then I might steal a year from somebody else. Yeah. Be like, no, I, I prefer to have a year, so. Sure. That's still the year. I could see that. Although, if I still, if I have to have cancer for an extra year, and then kick it anyway after 16 months, or yeah, 15 months, so a year plus three, mm-hmm. I'm just die in three months, Yeah, get my shit together and be dead. Like, be done. <clears throat> we do have a friend who was told that they were dying. Did they steal a year from anyone? Well, so funny story, oh, they put their affairs in order. Mm-hmm. And then they, were they, did they get And they're cured? still alive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like 10 years later. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah it happened to an aunt of mine. They're, they're like, well, at your age and with your health problems, since you've been smoking since you were 12, um, <laughs> and you're now, what, 80? All right. Um, if you stop smoking right now, go in the strict regimen and check yourself into the hospital, you might live another two months. I'd be like, fuck this shit. I attended her funeral eight years later, mm-hmm. and she didn't change a damn thing because Aunt Syl did not give a fuck. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She was a little old Jewish lady with a hump who smoked <clears throat> from the time she woke up till the time she went to sleep, and best as we can figure, she might have even been sleep smoking. Mm-hmm. That's very impressive. It sounds you know, there's some preservatives in, in those cigarettes mm-hmm. to keep you alive for a while. Yeah, I've got family members that I'm like, how are you still alive? With as much as you smoke, I mean, you might as well just suck on, like, the tailpipe of a car. Zero calories per one teaspoon in this hot sauce. I feel the same Two way ab- about my goo. But anyway. Two teaspoons? Then you start talking calories. What? That doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. Food labeling laws. Well, well and that's technically, because the serving size is one teaspoon. I understand that. But technically, so, like, if you think about it this way, though, what, uh, one of your loads is 18 calories. Mm-hmm. So. Well, it's just like water. Water has... Zero calories per eight fluid ounces in a 16 and a half ounce bottle. You have two and a half servings. If I need nutrition facts for water. <laughs> they have to put them on everything now. I know. To it's require. stupid. It is dumb. Are you Mel sure? didn't answer the question. Yeah, no, was, I'm still waiting for Mel to answer that question, though. Mel, what do you think? If you could live one more year, but you'd have to suck a year away from someone else... I'll die eventually, so I don't think I'd take another year. Mm hmm. I don't. I mean, unless I was like, seriously, I'm on the verge of something really awesome that would change humanity, then yes. Then my contribution to humanity would be worth that extra year. However, I'm not probably one of those people that's going to, you know, contribute like the cure to every known cancer. So, yeah, I'm cool with just kicking it when I kick it. 
Now, would you rather die peacefully among friends at age 50 or painfully alone at age 80? Assume that most of the last 30 years would be good ones. 50. Dell. 50. Ooh, here's a good sort of random one. If you were to discover that your closest friend was a heroin dealer, what would you do? Go up and smack him sideways. Mm. I mean, well, certainly t- talk to them about it. I yeah. Would, you know, I think if it, if it really was my closest friend, I'd be like, so, it's about this heroin dealing thing you've got. Mm-hmm. Well, technically, are you friends with any pharmacists? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So technically, mm-hmm. in a very roundabout way, you are friends with heroin dealers. Okay. In very uh, sort of state, <laughs> state-sanctioned, heavily licensed yes. way. <laughs> yes. And that's what makes it okay. The state said, sure. Sure. You can sell opiates to people. Well, if you're selling masses. clean opiates. Well, right, and, that's the problem. With, you know, like, the problem with heroin is that there's a lot of shitty heroin floating yeah. around. Yeah. Dead making heroin. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. I know. That's how Bella feels about this whole thing. She does. All right, now question for you. If you were helping to raise money for a charity and someone agreed to make a large contribution if you would perform at the upcoming fundraising show, would you? If so, what would you like to perform and assume the show would have an audience of about a thousand people? Sure. Yes. Um. But what would you perform? Oral. <laughs> Probably As I'm kinda. sitting here thinking, honestly, like I'm, I know the thought behind both your minds is fellatio. Yeah, I mean, First thing kind we... of an exhibitionist. Depends on what the fundraiser was for. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to be famous, and in what way? Professionally, maybe, but like socially, not especially. I feel like we culturally put a lot of pressure on social celebrities that's not warranted or especially useful. Uh, um, but like people who are famous, you know, sort of famous, renowned within a field, I think are interesting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you think, Mel? Would you want to be famous? And for what? What would you want to do to be famous? I don't know if I want to be famous. I just, I guess I'd like to be recognized for the stuff that I do well. I don't know if that necessarily means you're famous. You mean like oral? Yes. (laughs) I will recognize you for that. There you go. You're going to have to do a lot more to be famous, though, I think. I mean, off you go. I mean, you know, maybe just the right video. I'm just saying. Mm, Possible, yeah. Possible. Mm. I don't know, like... I guess I look at what I do in my normal life, and I don't like being in the spotlight. Mm -hmm. Um, But I like recognition, just like anybody else. I guess if I were to be famous, it'd be to, like, be for my art. Mm -hmm. Have your art hanging in the loo? Maybe. I've had my art hanging in the loo. Does that count? To users of the loo, you're famous. You've been hung in the loo, too. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Honey? Yes, honey. What do you think? Would you want to be famous? And if so, for what? I think I'd want to be a rock star, man. Mm Mm-hmm. Just because, like... We don't have a lot of Korean rock stars. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Who was that guy? Um, Yeah, see, what a rock star. She doesn't even know the name. Well, whoever did the game in style or whatever. Um, I wouldn't call that rocking. Yeah, I wouldn't call that rocking either, but... um. You know, I mean, because I'm, I'm really not, like, a type of person who's like, oh, hey, everybody, look at me. Look at me. But I, I feel like rock stars are always like, look at me. But I don't think I would want it for very long. I'd be like a day or two, and I'm like, I'm done. We're good. It's cool. It's true. Now, I saw a meme the other day that said that the the basic goal of almost everyone's life is to make the maximum number of people cry when you're dead. How do you <laughs> picture your funeral? Is it important for you to have people mourn for your death? 
No, I'm gonna have one of them like celebration of life funerals. Like Are we seriously, gonna, like put you on a funeral pyre and send you down the Ganges, or no, you could put me on a really big bonfire though, if you wanted. Yeah, roast marshmallows. Sure, make your damn s'mores off my ashes. Rocking ass ass. Ashmores. 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 Mm-hmm. Mount Ashmore. Um, yeah, I mean, like, seriously, like, recite all the really bad jokes I've ever told in my stupid life, and... Oh, man. What is it going to be remembered for? Yeah. You know, like, I come <laughs> from a family of really bad punny makers, and... Came up with some excellent... Dad excellent jokes. Got dad excellent. jokes. Yeah. They told me on the way over here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Such as... These are painting and these are art related mm-hmm. dad jokes. The first of which Who's the favorite artist of an orgasming Canadian? Who? Moan A. <laughs> Mel's really proud of this. You're welcome. <laughs> well, you know, it, that's a good one. And what That's was the good one? The other one was about squares. <laughs> about squares? Yeah. If, <clears throat> if someone says, you're a square man, what type of artist are you? A cubist? <laughs> that was a little weak. This I was going to say, no, it's only when you get a bunch of squares together and okay. arrange them properly. Mm-hmm. Then you get an orgy that you could call cubism. <laughs> so you can just take the pun and make it worse. Yes. Yeah, you just kind of keep running with it. Yeah, it's a dad thing. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I see that. Yes, um, this this started because I saw a really this this joke really hit me hit me at my core, which was where does a mansplainer get his water from a well? Actually, maybe it's better in print. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> Anyway. So if you really want to make that joke work, just take it, write it down, and then read it. It'll be so much funnier. Yeah. I liked it. And what's a baby's favorite artist? You didn't tell me this one. Dada. A dadaist. A dadaist. A dadaist. <laughs> That's precious. Back to the questions. Back to the, back to the questions at hand. The ones in the back are real deep, P.S. Mm-hmm. Like kind of uncomfortable. Really? Yeah. I think they, yeah. yeah. There's like a little preface on them, too. Anyway, go ahead. I like this plan. Well, okay, let, let's still start with some of these that are kind of mid-range, though. You, your closest friend, and your father are on vacation together, hiking in a remote jungle. Your two companions, would be your father and your best friend, stumble into a nest of poisonous vipers hmm. and are bitten repeatedly. You know neither will live without an immediate shot of anti-venom, yet there's only a single dose of anti-venom, and it is in your pocket. What would you do? How is the dose administered, and can I split it in half and then suck the wounds? No. No. No, that would be too easy. Say my friend, John, my father. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... He's going to go sooner. Yeah. Yeah. I fig- I would figure uh, unless friend... the survival skills knowledge was greater in his head, mm-hmm. then I might actually wish my friend. Yes, I think I would drop it down into the pit and be like, "You guys fight it out." <laughs> <laughs> so if they're both unconscious, then they both die. Yeah, because mm-hmm. you threw that. You'd be like, "Sorry," yeah. or it wasn't my choice. <laughs> be like, just in case. Whereas the magic in me would just be like. No, what you do is you pick up one of the vipers and you shoot the anti-venom into the viper and then you have that viper bite everyone and it'll cure them all. It's not how it works. That's what happens when you read too many fantasy books as a child. Mm-hmm. FYI. Yes. All right. Is there something you've dreamed of doing for a long time and why haven't you done it? Um. Travel anywhere but outside... but. But Trail me. anywhere outside the U.S.? Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I haven't done it because I have no money. Yes. Yet. That's the thing. This tea is pink. It is. But it's delicious. Mm-hmm. Pink drinks. Mm-hmm. Um, I... I mean, mine's money, too. I want to get my pilot's license. 
but it's expensive. He said your, your dad would pay for that. Yeah, there's also like calling the weird old dudes and dealing with weird old dudes who teach people how to fly. That's kind of been a hang up. Can't well, you find like a young hip instructor? You know, you they've would. They've got a couple. No, no, they really don't. <laughs> Keep looking around, man. Maybe you find I mean, someone you know, for the mile high club. They're 40. Too. There you go. They're 40, not 80. Right. Well, <laughs> yeah. Because I haven't done it because time and money are expensive. Yeah. Yes. It's my excuse for most things. Most things, yeah. Mostly. I don't know, what do you think, honey? What, what is something that I dreamed of that I... Mm-hmm. Yeah. That you want to do or... That I want to do? Yeah, that you haven't done yet in life. Hmm. Well, I'd like to take a really kick-ass vacation. Like, one of the ones that you're like, that was the best vacation ever. Like, I want to... Go back to Korea. That would be fun. See, visit my mom's grave. But tickets to Korea are very expensive. True. Yes. You're looking at like three thousand mm-hmm. dollars. <laughs> and that's just the point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. You know you will die of an incurable disease within three months. Would you allow yourself to be frozen within the week if you knew it would give you a modest chance of being revived a thousand years and living in a greatly extended life? Nope. I've watched Wayward Pines. Nope. (laughs) (laughs) I've seen this movie and it's bad. Yeah. (laughs) It all goes to shit. Yeah. So no. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, because even if they could figure out a cure and a thousand years later, you don't know anybody. Mm -hmm. None of your friends or family are there. Yeah, and then while you're still talking about iPods, they're like, what the fuck's an iPod? Yeah. (laughs) What the hell is that? You used to have sex. How? What? That's not how we do it anymore. Oh, admit it. You know it's going to be funny when you see little kids going to the nursing home and little old man is just like, I'm going to play you this. It was the music I listened to when I was your age. (laughs) That's an... You say shit about hoes and tricks, sir. And it's like, yeah, your grandma was a hoe. <laughs> God, even your dog likes to tickle me. Well, yeah, everybody yeah. likes to tickle you. You're adorable. You bounce. Mm-hmm. Anyway, what do you most strive for in your life? Accomplishment, security, love, power, excitement, knowledge, or something else? Yes. You strive for yes? Mm-hmm. It's a band. I mean, it's you just get the albums and listen to them. Like who? Mm-hmm. Well, you can listen to them as well. Yeah. What do you strive for most in life? Um, I want knowledge, though. I mean... I don't, I don't know. I strive for most in life. It's knowledge and understanding. I mean, applicable knowledge. I don't, I don't know. And what? Some securities. You're bad, Just... at, you're bad at playing, dog. Yeah. Go play over there. <laughs> All right. An eccentric millionaire offers to donate a large sum of money to charity if you will step completely naked from a car onto a busy downtown street, walk four blocks, and then climb back into the car, knowing that there would be no danger of physical abuse. Would you do it? Yes. Yeah, sure. Bunch of freaks. That was (laughs) easy. I feel like I should throw that one out there because I'm like, well, everyone's pretty much going to say yes. There may be a few (laughs) snarky comments as well. Let's roll with this shit. Does the fact that you have never done something before increase or decrease its appeal to you? Depends on the thing. Yeah, I was going to say, I've never shot anybody before, but that doesn't really increase my interest in it. Yeah. I don't know, it's kind of got a TAT aspect to it as well. TAT. Thematic aptitude test. You're given something that has no specific immediate connotations, and then you add your own, like being given the idea of doing something you've never done before, my thought would be taking on a new job or learning a new skill, and Shay's just like, well, I've never shot anyone before. (laughs) I haven't (laughs) off anybody yet, so that doesn't... But I'm thinking about it all the time. (laughs) Oh, I think about it quite often. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Given present company, I can't say I'm surprised. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, hush up. I know. Would you like to have your rate of physical aging slowed by a factor of 30 so as to give you a life expectancy of about 2,000 years? No. 
What is all this living forever shit? We're supposed to die. Well, in this one, it implies that you're still going to die. You're just going to have an expanded life. It's not like, and you won't live forever. It's like, no, you will just slowly age and die. Well, Well, give me the ability to travel across the universe faster so I can, like... I'm gonna get like explore two, yeah, other I mean, stuff. Two thousand years, yeah. I'm not even, not even gonna get very far. Well, I know, well, you can get fairly I, far, I guess. You can get pretty far in two thousand years. I mean, we just sent out, you know, probes not that long ago that have found something beyond our solar system. That takes a while to travel. There you go. But yeah, I need like fast moving spaceship and. Yes. I don't know. The desire to the desire to live forever, I think, has unintended consequences that we don't. Well, yeah, I mean, think realize. of how many tragedies you'd have to live through, mm-hmm. how many wars, how many... You'd have to see all your friends and family go, and even the new friends that you make, like in the Green Mile. Or like Doctor Who. Yes. Doctor Who? What? Actually, if you don't mind, it's just the Doctor. Mm-hmm. If you could take a one-month trip anywhere in the world and money were not a consideration, where would you go and what would you do? Mm. Only one place, and go to Australia. That's what I was going to say, too. Oh my gosh, I don't think I could do it. Why? Too many bugs? Too many spiders. Well, and everything there kind of designed to kill you. Details. Yeah. I got friends. Money's no object. Mm Mm-hmm. I'll buy the spiders. (laughs) I'll pay them off. I'll I'll pay off the mob spiders. They're coming to get you. We'll bring, we'll bring the big snakes to eat the big spiders. But where would you, where would you travel to hmm. for a month? If I could go. For Actually, I might even go to London. Yeah. See, I don't know. To to me, it's not the place. It's the individual. It's not the destination. It's the journey. No, no. See, even the journey. <laughs> if you think about it, taking a long journey with boring people would suck. Yes. But if you took a short journey with interesting people, it would still be awesome. Or a really long journey with interesting people, it would still be awesome. Yeah. It's not the awesomeness of the place, it's the awesomeness of the individual looking at the place that determines how awesome it is or is not. True. Okay, well let's say you were going by yourself. It was just you. And I'm totally awesome. It would be the best company ever, wouldn't it? I mean, oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think I would like to stick to a place where I'm reasonably familiar with the language just to make sure I could actually communicate with the dingbats I met and they would be honest about their ability to communicate with me since most of the world speaks English but very little mm-hmm. of it wants to admit that. Yes. Um, I'd probably stick no, to you one... You just of... sign the whole way. Mm-hmm. Like, pretend you're deaf, they'll type. Yeah. That doesn't actually work. Um, I, I know, the different sign language. Yeah, every country actually has its own That's sign language. That's why there's American sign language. <laughs> yeah, ASL. So, no, I'd probably stick uh, to somewhere around Europe, but as far as exactly where, just for the sake of humor, I might literally spread out a map and throw a dart. Uh-huh. As long as it was technically an English-speaking country, I'd be like, oh, let's go there to that space mm-hmm. for that time, for that reason. Estonia! Yeah, Estonia's a place. Mm-hmm. Which, again, would be interesting. Like, it wouldn't matter if you were talking about some sort of war-torn, impoverished country. Mm-hmm. That would have very interesting culture and peoples and experiences that you wouldn't have otherwise. Or a more relaxed first world country that would still have a extensive history and interesting people, but of a different caliber and style. I don't think I would do, like, France again. But I would do, like, Switzerland or Italy. Switzerland's too cold. Switzerland wasn't bad. In Italy, I would probably get my ass in trouble really quick, because that's where the Cathals live. Yes, I know. <laughs> I'm very aware. Go to Iceland in the hot springs. There, ooh. New Zealand would be fun, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, like, I could rock, like, a New Zealand, or even an old Zealand, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> Tanzania. Tasmania. Not Tanzania. No, because knowing my luck, I'd go to Tasmania, and there'd be the devils. Let's go to Korea. No, I can't. There's too many Koreans there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, and then you wouldn't be able to find me either. You'd be like, oh my god, I lost her. They all look alike. Mm-hmm. Well, and then think about all the interesting comments I make about Koreans. Mm-hmm. How fast do you think I'd be stoned to death? <laughs> That'd be fun to see. <laughs> so is it Let's true go. that due to your inability to pronounce certain letters, the country should actually be called Korea? Korea. Yeah, no, no I'd, I'd be dead pretty quickly. It's like your family's brilliant idea to take me to Disney World. Yes. 
Sounds awesome. And my yeah. initial thought is walking up to one of the princes or princesses and first confirming with them that they are, in fact, a prince or princess, which, given the fact that they're an actor, they have to sit there and be like, yes, yes, I am. I'm from a royal bloodline. And I'd have to point out that that means they're inbred. <laughs> and then start to ask them about their physical deformities due to the inbreeding. Mm hmm. And how many of their immediate relatives are dwarves or suffer yep. from extreme dwarfism? You go ahead and you stand yourself in well, those I mean, lines. Just look at Snow White. You did what to him? Just look at Snow White. Mm-hmm. Why? Not I'd have to look at her and be like, you know, for PC reasons, dwarfism. your name really should mm-hmm. be Snow Caucasian. No oh, God. Well, here's the thing, though. You're not going to want to stand in the ungodly lines that people stand in to meet the characters. It's ridiculous. Only if I can get pictures of me making out with the princes. That's a thing. The princes or the princesses? The princes. The princesses would be sort of like, ah, look, there I am making out with someone pretending to be XYZ PZRQ. But how funny would it be to have pictures of me making out with Disney princes? (laughs) It's perverted. It's really off the wall. And it's a wonderful way to just... Totally screw up the concept of Disney just to corrupt. <laughs> Which you know I'm all for. I mean, that's, that's one of my favorite things in life is corruption. Well, and, and you know there'd be some news people there, like oh, yeah. Aladdin kiss, kisses Jesus. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what? Two Middle Eastern guys kissing. What's so bad about that? <laughs> I'm just saying. Right? Now, would you be willing to reduce your Sorry. life expectancy by five years to become extremely attractive? Yes. Well, I don't have to do that. <laughs> Sorry. Somebody had to say it. Yes. So I'd lose yes, five years of my life? Yes. yes. But yes. you'd be extremely attractive. Yes. Because if I were attractive, that would probably also mean I was healthy. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily. Hmm. As, as the, the character from SNL said, uh, the infamous, you look marvelous fellow, he said, you do not have to look marvelous to feel marvelous. You look marvelous. You can look amazing and be fucked up. That's true. Mm-hmm. So actually, no, it would just be attractive. I look oh. at it this way. It'd be like the years where I'm super old anyway, so I might as well get rid of those. Yeah, give me give me to like 80 and then make me look like Jack Lane. Sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'd have all the nursing home ladies all over me. Yeah. <laughs> and then you have a nice uh, thing of crabs and syphilis. And then I die. A happy old man. There you go. <laughs> well, and what dirty if specifically in, in your case... To the end. <laughs> what if specifically in your case it also meant that you grew a normal-sized biological penis? Yes! <laughs> Done! Sign me up. Or even like one my size. What? You know, just carbon copy of my penis but on you. Sure. And you That's just walk around seven smacking to nine, with seven it. Seven to nine inches. Seven to nine inches. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> you keep you keep pronouncing you're gonna die. die before okay, me. everyone, grab I your am. phones I'm gonna die. and uh, turn on the calculator feature. <laughs> Why? How many different sexual partners have you had in your life, and would you prefer if you had more or fewer? Oh, I don't need a calculator for that. <laughs> Is it is it bad if I don't I mean, exactly know my number? Because yeah. there's so many. I used to know. I used to know, and then I congratulations. And then I got rid Mel. of that headboard. You are the most chaste individual in the room. How yep. often does that happen? <laughs> often. More than you'd think, actually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. How many? How? What? Well, I'm sorry. Are we allowed to ask what the number is? Well, technically, that was the question. Uh, what is the number then? Um, four. I think mine's only like eight. It's not, I think, ish. Eight. Not including the German student. Yeah, that includes the German student. It does not include the nipple biter in that elevator, though. Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like an elevator nipple yeah. biter. Yeah, I was going to say. I had to think. I was like, was actual sexual intercourse between two people. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Why, was, why say, are we did you actually to two people? Well, yeah. no. I'm... Sorry. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> I do. Yeah. Oh, I'm number one again. Mm-hmm. Yes, this happens all the time. Oh, God. <laughs> What's going on here? 
I don't understand. It's the three triple middle finger. finger. Mm-hmm. Three, three middle fingers. Finger. It looks dirty. All right, so That's what she said. calculators away. If your friends and acquaintances were willing to bluntly and honestly tell you what they really thought of you, would you want them to? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I worry all the time that people yeah. tell me one thing to my face and then I'm like, mm, that bitch, behind my back. And frankly, I don't give a flying fuck what you think of me behind my back. You can't say it's my face. But mm-hmm. if you'd be willing to tell me, I'd have a lot more respect for you. Yep. That. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yes and no. I don't have that many friends to begin with. So if the ones I have are going to be honest with me, I hope they've been so at this point. And if they don't, well, yeah, I lost two friends. Yeah, see, I, I, yeah, I, I, <laughs> you've got more than two friends. <laughs> Shut your mouth. Shut your whore mouth. Frighten your whore mouth. <laughs> um, I feel like we got a lot of people here from whore mouth, Kentucky. Mm-hmm. I think I think I would want to know, but then like, if I was too traumatized by it, I would want to have, have my mind re- erased. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Alcohol is really good for that. It yeah. is. It is. <laughs> Except for I remember everything. Well, that's why. A different drug then. That's why I got my nickname. Because I would remember and all the guys would forget what, what happened the night before. And I'd be like, oh, well, you did this, this, and this. And you did this, this, and this. And, yeah, I always remembered. All right. Well. Except for the one night when we went to uh, your Christmas party. I think that's the one and only time I've ever drank till I blacked out. Yeah. No, I trust me. I have great memories of that. <laughs> because the entire time we were getting ready for this party, someone... Who shall remain nameless. Me. Twinkie. Yes. No, no, no. She doesn't have a name. Um, (laughs) Insisted that I not drink too much because she wanted to take advantage of me. I did. (laughs) I did. But then... But you still got ahead. Mm Mm-hmm. To completion. So you still got to get off. At the Christmas party. (laughs) (laughs) It's good. There you go. You know... We were outside. Why not? Sounds chilly. Yeah, it wasn't so bad. That's good. Once you get gone, it doesn't... It's true. You have to worry about after you're done when all the blood has gone elsewhere. Mm-hmm. And you get the and, you, and you remember that you're like, oh shit, I'm outside. Mm-hmm. Fair. But you had your jacket on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that was also the infamous night where we were having a conversation with one of my coworkers. And uh, they were talking about, like... No, I, I would never have sex with someone else's boyfriend. And one of the guys I work with was standing there like, why not? I have sex with other people's girlfriends. And someone sitting at this table goes, me too. I don't know. <laughs> <Who> that is. <laughs> couldn't, couldn't be anybody no. at this Mind table. You, in all no. fairness, the same guy came in one night uh, to, for his shift. And we were just talking, and he's just telling me about all the problems he's got in his relationship. And then after a while, he's like, oh my god, I'm sorry I'm bothering with you, you with all this shit. And I'm like, are you kidding? You normal people fascinate the fuck out of me. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just like, I'm going to miss you, and I don't work here anymore, because <laughs> nobody else says shit like that to me. Aww. No. Special snowflake. I'm just like, no, like, I'm so, I've, I've just become so used to the kinky alternative people that are way more open, way more capable of actually saying what they think and what they want and all that shit, that's like, hearing normal people, it's like, do you guys just pull out Ouija boards to try to understand each other? <laughs> <laughs> pull out a bunch of symbols and point mm-hmm. at them. Yeah, like, seriously, it's like you're guys just sitting there with cards, like, what card is this one? <laughs> and I think I'm that'd like, be a great way. How the fuck do you people figure out what's going on if you can't communicate at all? You could take several years of Cosmo mm-hmm. and, like, cut out the sex tips and just use them as, like, flashcards for a relationship. Mm-hmm. It would be hilarious. Yeah, and it would probably be about as functional as the yeah. bullshit that the normal mm-hmm. people pull. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's how we learn what normal people's relationships are like. I don't there know. There you go. <laughs> but still, I'm just like, God like, damn, play. normal people really yeah. do. <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not even saying that just to be cruel or belittle them. Like, normal people fascinate the crap out of me with their ridiculous relationship problems because I'm like, oh my God, you're creating all these problems for yourself. Mm-hmm. You realize that, right? But heaven forfend, you actually try to bring that to their attention, and heaven forfend, they try to do anything so ridiculous and revolutionary as communicate, mm-hmm. because then they lose the relationship immediately because people can't stand what they said. Yeah. I'm like, oh my god. 
Yeah. Okay, so let's bounce to something completely different and random. I know. No one expected it. No. No. Nobody expects this. Do you believe in something entirely different? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Do you believe in capital punishment? Would you be willing to execute a man sentenced to death by the courts if you were selected by lot to do so, and he would go free if you refused? Assume you know no details of the trial. I don't support capital punishment in our current justice system. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, but I also don't really support life imprisonment. Mm-hmm. Which is why I actually support the death penalty personally, mm-hmm. I, especially like the way Texas does it. They don't make you sit around for like thirty years waiting to die. They're like, look, mm-hmm. you're sentenced for execution. You're going to go fast track, and we're just going to make this end so you don't have to sit around being fucking miserable for decades yeah. while we try to figure out if and we should. And go slowly or insane. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, at that point, even if you get released, you're going to be so fucked up, you're not going to yeah. be able to live in society anyway. Yeah, no, the psychological stress of being on death row is, is yeah. not something. A fun thing. <laughs> Which is why I'm like, to me, I, I support it, but it's purely mercy, in my yeah. opinion. But, yeah, but the, the, way it's, the way it's conducted here is not humane most, in most instances. I don't put my nose in your crotch unless asked. Go away. <laughs> Well, don't put the peanut butter then. <laughs> Oops. Oops. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, man. Yeah, I don't know. Like, uh, in certain instances, I guess I kind of support annoying. capital punishment. But I don't know that I would be the one to do it if I didn't know the, the circumstances. Details of, yeah. Yeah. I want to like, know. Because, like, especially with all <laughs> the stuff that's been going on recently on the news about how, like, all of these college rapists are, you know, getting... Three months. Three months. Or, or six a year. months, technically. And six months and only have... Only and have served half of their sentence. Mm-hmm. And then you've got somebody who, like, hacked the school's, like, football website and mm-hmm. found out that these guys have a whole, like, exchange of emails of, like, with pictures of them committing the rape and crime. Mm-hmm. And they're going to try and serve him 16 years in prison. Mm-hmm. And... Yeah. The whole football team of the rape team, mm-hmm. as they call themselves, are each getting less than three years sentences. Well, and there was a, a like, news story. I'm sorry. Like, that's not a capital punishment crime. But mm-hmm. at the same time, like, our legal system is so fucking bass backwards. Mm-hmm. Well, there so, was an article about a guy who was literally caught. Like, somebody walked in on him um, having sex with a two-year-old. Oh, yeah. I saw that, but yeah. I didn't read it. Yeah. Because he was, head. yeah, because he was like 16 and the kid was two and somebody else was filming it. And he... And the judge was like, oh, it would be too it, traumatizing for him to go to jail. No, he pled it down to a, a lesser, mis, like, misdemeanor. And I mean, he's going to, he's going to have to register as a sex offender and things like that, but he got nothing else. No jail time, no nothing. And I'm thinking... Castration. Mm-hmm. Just castration. Work. It does not work. I know. That's the problem. Um, when you're talking about something like castration, even chemical castration, the problem mm-hmm. is that um, <clears throat> sex offenders really break down into two different types. Mm-hmm. You have your uh, fuck-ups and your compulsives. Mm-hmm. If you got someone who's fucked up, odds of them actually committing a crime ever again are slim nuts and a little bit less than that. Mm-hmm. And then you got your compulsives, who are the actual rapists and child molesters, who even if they are otherwise castrated, like either physically or chemically, mm-hmm. um, because it's not necessarily stemming from a sexual need, they will turn to what's called object rape. They will take other things and rape people with them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. So the castration doesn't even work. Yeah. But I was just surprised that he got off with no jail time. Mm-hmm. No, nothing. But we don't treat sexual crimes as serious crimes in this country. Yeah, we won't show sexual behavior in films, but we'll show as many violent... Right. Like, again. Well, we don't show... Yeah, right, we don't show consensual sexual behavior. Oh, heaven forbid, no. That would be naughty. That well, would be bounce to a slightly happier subject. <laughs> Self-hatred. If 100 people your age were chosen at random, how many do you think you'd find leading a more satisfying life than yours? If other people... 
I mean, we all have shit. We all have problems. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but how many of them do you think would be more satisfied with their life? How many people are we picking? One, out of 100. 100. No, I didn't catch that right. 100 yeah, of our peers. Mm-hmm. 100 half. of them. Yeah. Yeah. I think of my peers would be a little less than half. Yeah. We're, we're satisfied. Probably 25 to 30%. Here's what I think would happen. We'd all say we're happy until somebody said, yeah, my life sucks, and then everyone would chime in. Yeah, my life sucks even more. And then we would play the, the pissing game of who my has the shittier life. Yeah. yeah. The one upping of how shitty somebody's life is because we're okay. competitive in this country. And mm-hmm. my life has to be worse than yours because I have to prove a point. That it has to be. <laughs> I'm on top. Yes. Yeah, I am the best the at having a shitty life. Yeah. Yes. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to back up slowly before I get hit with something. Oh, Have you had satisfying sex within the last three months? <laughs> Saw that one. <laughs> Why yes. are you backing up? Just in case. I don't want you to be like, no, and then try to kill me with a spoon. No. Spoon! I will spoon you to death. No, so I mean, cuddly. Yes. No. I mean, satisfying yes. sex in the last three months. Could have had more. Yeah. Boy, you can always have yeah. more. Always. Always have more. Yeah, but I have a life policy, which is to not have bad sex. Mm-hmm. So, so there's that. How do you accomplish that particular life policy? If you end up with somebody that you have bad sex with, you move on? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Still, call it, it out doesn't the prevent moment. the bad sex, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, if it, tur- if it starts out bad, I can be like, this is yeah. not working for me. If, Something different. If we can't change yeah. it, then said partner can sit on said partner's hands until I am satisfied because I never leave myself hanging. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, unless that's my game, but that's mm-hmm. you know that's different. But yeah, it works out okay. I mean, mostly how I exercise that is by not having sex with assholes. There you go. Well, in the asshole, but not with assholes. Not really in the asshole that much. I don't like it that much. Not a big fan of the butt not, sex. Not a big fan of the butt sex. You don't like Me anyone either. knocking at the bad door. No, I'm, no, I really don't. No, it doesn't actually. It's not actually that fun. Mm-mm. No. Well, several of us at this table are disappointed. But anyway, <laughs> if you knew your child would be severely retarded and would die by the age of five, would you decide to have an abortion? Yeah. Yes. Not relevant. No. I mean... I'm actually curious if... How would you feel about it, though, given the fact that, in theory, it would be your child, though, mm-hmm. even if you weren't the one specifically no getting the abortion? I'd be supportive no matter what. I'd... Of your of your partner? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, but if you were in the position to have to make the decision, what would your decision be? Abortion. Okay. Okay, thanks. Just yeah. checking. Just double checking. Just, just make sure. Just because I'm letting you know right now that it's just how it is. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. There's a, there's a level of mental disability that's okay, but severe. Like the quality of life. Well, yeah. Obviously, yeah. there there's a there's a certain level of mental disability that's okay. I mean, you came over here to spend time with me. Mm-hmm. A certain level of mental disability must be expected. Oh, here's a good one for you, honey. Do you find it hard to say no that you regularly do favors you do not want to do, and if so, why? No. I don't do that. I don't don't do that sort of crap. What? There's a table full of people who have been drinking that don't believe you. (laughs) Your face is, is totally believable. I mean, do I do favors that I probably should say no to? Yes. I do it all the time. Why do I do it? Because hopefully I expect people to act the way I would act. And if I ever needed anything, I would hope that they would be here for me like I am for them. Plus, sometimes I just, I hate seeing people in, like, in pain or in distress or anything like that. Really? It kind of turns me on. Well, yeah, I know. But, you know, it, it, it's, it's one of those things. 
Uh, I don't know. What do you, is, what do you think, Mel? Small. Do you find yourself uh, doing favors you'd rather not do, and why? I have on occasion. Mm-hmm. Mostly, it's. Stuff that I think I might actually get something personally out of as well. Mm-hmm. But I try not to too often. Mm-hmm. Well, speaking of fellatio, what do you think? <laughs> I like fellatio. Um, I do favors all the time for people that I shouldn't. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't. I don't say no because I'm culturally conditioned to not say no. Which culture are you referring to? My culture. Honky chicks? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like your family. It's like that, that weird Midwest good. nice, like, I'm gonna, I'll do anything for you, but I won't like you for it. <laughs> I, I don't know, maybe it's like a white woman thing, like, yeah, I'll say yes. Basically. I mean... Where the white women at? Well, there's a... There's a no, Almost I, gendered expectation that women yeah. are going to do more favors for people than men will mm-hmm. on a regular basis because if I can, you're if, supposed to be nice. The women are supposed to be nice and and emotional and caring. not to mention nurturers, right, and all that something or other. I know plenty of cold-hearted women that wouldn't do shit for anybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you think like really even like somebody was in a bind. Some people are just all about themselves. I know, but those some people are, are all about the base. No trouble. Mm-hmm. No yeah. trouble. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're all about the base. But no, I mean most people. I would. do too, but still. And here we are. You end up stuck with it. Mm-hmm. I hate Justin Bieber, but I have to say his name all the time to make fun of him. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. It's true. Well, and and I probably I probably take it to the point where I'll end up. You take it to self destruction. Hence why I looked at you for that question. Yeah. I have a tendency to. Like, I'll kill myself before I say no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you began to be very attracted to someone of another race, how would your behavior differ from what it would be towards someone of your own race? It wouldn't be different at all. <laughs> Why are you looking at me? <laughs> <laughs> You're so creepy. I know. I'm right? just thinking creepy. of all the jokes know, I've right? made at your expense. I know. It's fine. I mean, if you were dating a white lady, what? Where would where would your humor be? Oh well, I mean, technically, he was dating a white woman. That's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I made fun of her for being backwoods. Like mm-hmm. I have to find something. Yeah, but you were also dating the, the other white woman. <laughs> and I made fun of her for being a soulless ginger. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. So. And then she got a freckle for every soul she took from someone. That's right. <laughs> yep. It's a good thing that you didn't have one, for her to steal. But yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't feel like I would treat anybody any differently. I mean, I would try to respect their culture if they had, you know, specific things, yeah. customs, and things like that. Like, I'd love to know what things you're thinking of. Well, but I mean, like, okay, so falafel, you know, he's... I was waiting to hear, I wouldn't go to a black man's barbecue without a 40 and a watermelon. But, but you know what I mean, like, I mean... They have family customs that mm-hmm. I don't do on a normal basis, but I would feel, you know, like I would, I would want to do those with him mm-hmm. if I was dating him. So are you saying you, you want you want to go to the uh, Jewish temple with me? Or? If you wanted to go to the Jewish temple, I would go with you. I mean, we can get the cool Absolutely. sheet that has a hole in the middle. <laughs> sure. So what, what do you think? Would, would your behavior change at all? I mean, not based on attraction. I, I think if I was in a relationship with someone, the the cultural the cultural custom thing comes up, right? It's like, like I don't necessarily foresee myself being attracted to someone who holds a strong Christian tradition. But like, for Mel, like when, like, when you're with my family, you pray. We certainly do not do a lot of praying at our house. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know. I'm pretty pray. sure there's a whole lot of oh god going on. There's, I mean, yeah. there's plenty of yeah. oh god, but that that's kind of a limited that's prayer. Different. Yeah, <laughs> you know, but no. you know, but my my people pray over meals. Mm-hmm. 
Not yep. breakfast, not lunch, but always supper. Oh. I always love how it's your people. Yeah, my people, my people pray over meals too. Yeah. Well, and you know, you do go to church. Your people pray over meals, but your people, it's more like, oh, I pray, I do not get dysentery from this. Mm-hmm. Unless you're trying to lose weight, then it's like, oh, let me get the dysentery. Yeah. See, this is how it would be different if I don't know, was someone from a different culture. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Which is always so damn funny to me on some levels, though, like, because we make fun of uh, the whole thing of like, oh, black people, because they, they like watermelon and, and 40s of beer and fried chicken and grape soda. Yeah, and I'm just like, like... Everything, all those except grape mm-hmm. soda. They all sound great to me. <laughs> like, that's not a black thing. Mm-mm. That's just good taste. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, grape soda is good. Screw you, they're right. I don't really like grape soda. I'm not, See, I'm not much that's of a you're wrong. Drinker. Yeah, I am wrong. It's fine. I'm so wrong, I'm right. <laughs> no, you're so wrong. You're white. No. Oh. See, I went there. You did go no, there. No, he's so wrong. You yellow. Yeah. <laughs> no, she's so wrong. I'm she so yellow. Wong. <laughs> and two wongs don't make a right. <laughs> two wongs don't make a white. <laughs> and two wrongs don't make a right, but three lefts do. <laughs> Would you like to know the precise date of your death? I don't care. No. Not really. I don't worry about death. Stop doing that with your head. That's weird. Yeah. Weird. It's going to fall off. Mm-hmm. Tumble off. Mm-hmm. Well, well, see, like, in my case, I, I do know the precise date of my death because uh, I got a copy of my birth certificate. It has an expiration date on it. Cool. <laughs> what do you think, honey? Would you like to know the precise date of your death? I don't think so. I don't know. Part of me is just like, I don't want to know because I don't want to freak out about it. Part of me is like, I'd really like that just for planning purposes because <laughs> I, I, I'm kind of a planner. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm kind of a planner. Yeah. But then think about it. Like, if you knew the date of your death and you knew it wasn't going to be for like another 30 or 40 years, remove all fear you have. <laughs> like, I'm not going to die. It's time to start uh, skydiving. Mm-hmm. I think I'd like to try skydiving anyhow. Yeah. You know somebody who skydive, skydove lots and then had like a really freak accident and actually broke their back oh, skydiving. Mm-hmm. Not not in like an intractable way, but I was like, that really sucks. You know, you're like, I do this cool thing. Like, you know, skydiving is actually relatively safe, like one in a hundred. Mm-hmm. But if you skydive a hundred times, yeah, one sure, of times, that one's gonna happen. It's gonna... I think I just want to do the, just the ones, mm-hmm. <laughs> just the ones. Would you accept a guaranteed lifetime allowance of fifty thousand dollars per year, adjusted annually for inflation, if accepting it meant that you could never again earn money from either work or investments? Nope. No. Mel. It's a lot of money. Not really. Fifty thousand a year. Yeah, it's not that much money. I'd want to be able to invest it just for retirement for or safety. Yeah. Or, yeah. No, but you know, you're guaranteed fifty thousand a year anyway. You can burn. You, you, you can burn. You can burn, you can burn a through fifty thousand a year. No problem. Yeah. Get sick. Mm-hmm. Get sick and get hospitalized a couple times. There yep. goes your annual allotment. Yep. Right, like yeah, but that, even with insurance, another fifty thousand mm-hmm. comes around next year. If you don't yeah, starve year. to first, yeah. you couldn't invest any of it. And I suppose it doesn't say you can't save it, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, no, it does not. So I guess you you could, in theory, put away for a rainy day. Mm-hmm. But, but like in our current environment, fifty thousand dollars is a pretty modest lifestyle. It is, mm-hmm. and I think money, but adjusted for inflation. Yeah, yeah. Well, it will adjust for inflation. So, but it's always going to be fifty thousand dollars, and if you live somewhere cheap decent amount of money but mm-hmm. adjust you know adjusted for inflation does not also adjust for rising cost of living mm-hmm. it's going to get more expensive mm-hmm. to live in the middle of the country as the edges of the country wash away mm-hmm. in our lifetime because it's going to happen all of a sudden have to move montana in. will actually have a population exactly. there you go. <laughs> they'll have mm-hmm. to accept the fact that wyoming isn't really there it's just a blank spot on the map that they had to write something in <laughs> garfield taught me that when i was a child <laughs> just keep on keep on believing it that's why it's good. Why? Why? Why Wyoming. 
Why? I don't know. I think... You might take it. See, I don't know. See, like, in you guys, it would be the like, perfect I, situation. Like, what constitutes you, working? If you... Well, no, that's the thing is... You, can, you, you can't make you can money, work, money from right. working. So you can work, work all you want. You just can't make money from it. You can do whatever you choose to do, but you can't make money. Because you're already getting the 50000 a year. That's the thing is... Anything you wanted to do, you could do. Then I would just feel like I would be working on this... Like... I'd be working on the stuff that makes me happy... And I would still be making an income, but it just wouldn't necessarily be from the things that make me happy. Yeah, basically. Mm-hmm. So, like, you could do all the artwork in, in the world. Mm-hmm. You're basically getting paid for it, but not directly getting paid. Like, I would, I don't know, I might, like, well, I, I, I don't more, know, I don't more like, I don't, I don't, not being able to, to ensure your wealth. Yeah. I don't, I, I like being able to... The thought of being able to invest it in, you know. Yeah, but like, like in your guys' situation, state, Mel does this. Mm. That's fine. Mel makes and the fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, and you can. Work. It doesn't say jack shit about whether or not you can make money from investments. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Then that'd be fine. See. Yeah. Yeah, no, if, if Mel but could just show up and get 50K, that would be great. Wouldn't you have yeah, to show you up, just 50K every year? Mm-hmm. Boom, there it is. Yeah. Well, but here's the thing, too, is when I was working and I was working as an instructor, I was making, like, 60 a year. Mm-hmm. So I, I kind of feel like, well, yeah, 50 is great, but... Mm-hmm. 50 is not... I mean, it's yeah. not a... I mean, I think if, if you have a professional... If you have any but professional if you, training, 50 is not very much. No, but if you knew that the job in your career, like, the most you would ever make might be 40000 and you get 50000 yeah. instead. Well, that would different. be different. Mm-hmm. That would be different. If, you're, I think well, if, you're, and, per, and if also, your professional career starts in the neighborhood of 50 mm-hmm. and, and he can goes go out, anywhere, and, and then averages, I would say yeah. no. averages in the high five, low sixes, then... Then you don't take fifty k. Yeah, no. and then also think about quality of life, the amount of time you'd have to spend on whatever you wanted, which could include family, friends, charity work. Yeah, but I do a lot of that anyway. Yes, but imagine if you had an income, and that was all you had to do. Be bored as shit. No, I'd just find more to do. Sure. It's not like you couldn't do things. They're not saying fifty thousand a year, but you have to sit around for eight hours a day doing nothing, staring at a wall. Right, right. I still, I the the no <clears throat> the no investing, the no thing. backup, the no yeah. backup thing, no backup plan. Uh, like like so with my fifty thousand, I mean property is considered an investment. Mm-hmm. So with my fifty thousand, do I also have to plan on renting? I mean, no, you just can't make money from investments. Okay, so I can't. So I can. I can buy property, but I can't sell it. Yeah, you can't sell it. Uh, can I you lose can... money to interest still? <laughs> no. Okay. In theory, like technically, if you bought a property and as it increased in value, you put that money towards the cost of the property itself, then you have not earned an income. So I'd have to form an LLC. Maybe. <laughs> this is getting way too deep. It might yeah. be worthwhile. <laughs> this so, is getting really gonna convoluted. Need a, gonna yeah. need a shell company. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's there's gonna be a lot more circumstances to consider, but mm-hmm. yeah. I don't know if you were in in a relationship and you're still mm-hmm. technically making an income, you know, from that, and the other person's working a job where they're mm-hmm. also making an income. Mm-hmm. I'd say one of you should take the deal. Yeah. 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 Now you yeah. always have that guaranteed that security is... net of mm-hmm. someone is always making $50,000 a right. year. Because like, if the person who has a job gets injured for a long time, you know you still got fifty grand coming in plus whatever yep. their disability. So... Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. It's never dead. Are you tired? She, she, yeah. yeah she, gets, she gets a little bit... Um, like a toddler. <laughs> yeah. Last burst of energy. Yeah, she's like, well, no, she usually kind of gets a little plucky when she's like, um, we're supposed to be going, uh, going to lay down. Going to lay it's, down. It's almost now. bedtime. Hey, 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 guys, I guess up uh, bed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Our dog yeah. is being difficult, by the way, for you listeners at home. Yes. All right, we're now 
If mm-hmm. a crystal ball would tell you the truth about any one thing you wish to know concerning yourself, life, the future, anything else, what would you want to know? How the fuck do I get rid of this migraine? Well, that's pretty fair. Mel, what do you got? <laughs> I guess we'll, you know, I'd want to know if I'd have a successful career slash how long, if I could combine the two. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to make this a multiple... Or like, um, well, like, to like, simplify it, like, what could I do to have a successful, what would be a successful career for me, kind of question. Yeah, or like, would I be able to live off making art until practically the day I went completely demented? Sometimes. So until last week? I yes. mean, yeah. <laughs> Shoot. Yeah. Bang! Who fired a gun? Oh, uh, I did because you were holding up the Sacagawea dollars. That happens. Yeah. Planning your wedding was so much fun. I know. We should totally do it again next time. You guys need to get remarried just just so we can do that again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just that part? Mm-hmm. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll do the extra fun version. <laughs> The super awesome, happy, fun version where no one wears clothes. Mm-hmm. Sure. And it costs maybe a hundred bucks. Mm-hmm. Well, you need For to have enough second of jewelry coins. You'll have to, we'll have and, to get, and, a, get a run on second jewelry dollars. Mm-hmm. <sighs> bullets are expensive. All right, Ellen, what's the one thing you'd want to know? The truth about um, sorry, I kicked you. No, that's why I'm like, back. Is it, I see the dog. What's, it's, it's not a dog's tail. What's, what's kicking me? It's, it's a just foot. my foot. It's her foot. foot. It's just my foot flop. I wiggle. People. I wiggle. I turned this way so I didn't find you tonight. You're getting a break, man. There you go. I know, because I'm going to get it in my sleep. <laughs> well, probably. Why do you sleep so close? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh-uh, get back here. Oh, you idiot. Not two for flinching. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to know if I am, if I will ever be incapacitated and if it's a permanent thing or temporary. I mean, you're, you're totally turning this into multiple questions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, am I, okay, will I ever be permanently incapacitated? Per, yeah. That, that worries me more. Will I be permanently physically incapacitated? Because both of us can't be. <laughs> <laughs> well, it also just terrifies the living shit out of me. I might just off myself if it wasn't the case. Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to do that. But they won't let me. Hmm. All right. What is more important, actual experiences or the memories that remain when the experiences are over? You can't have the memories without making without Yeah. Them. Well, no, think about it as a total recall question. If you could just have a memory implanted of something that you didn't really do or that never really happened, would you call that good enough? Or would you actually insist on doing the thing rather than just having the memory implanted? I'd like to do the thing. Do I want do I want to leave it to beaver planted in my head of the, you know, perfect, you know, family structure or do I want to deal with all of the chaos that that comes with having a family. I mean, if I'm just getting memories beamed in, isn't that the giver? Not the plot of the giver? Mm-hmm. That didn't that. end well, as I recall. <laughs> no. That's not a happy story at the end. But as he as he continually recalled the memory, they started to fade. Mm-hmm. Too. So, even that, the memory only lasted so long. So, I would say the experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree. I think so, too. Now, what if the question revolved around the idea of would you rather have the memory but not the experience, or would you rather have the experience and then not remember it afterwards? 
as Ellen's pet hits the table. <laughs> that just seems... The idea of losing your memories is really terrifying. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, the, 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 the thought of Alzheimer's just scares the hell out of me. Yeah. Yeah. So then is it better to not... To not remember... To not ever have the memory... I forgot what the question was. Cause Would it be better to <laughs> have the experience but not remember it? Or have the memory but never have actually experienced it? I guess it would depend on what it was. Like, is it a good experience or a bad experience? And Ellen kind of has that look like her brain's trying to put a round peg in a square hole right mm. now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not It's not a logical question. Well, you can usually put a round peg in a square hole. It's usually a square peg in a round hole that's harder. Mm-hmm. Depends on the size of the peg and the size of the hole. If you're talking about six to nine inches. Yeah. Seven to nine inches. Mm -hmm. All right. Would you prefer to die a hero's death, die a martyr to some great cause, die in a natural catastrophe, or die peacefully? Peacefully. Peacefully. I mean, unless, like, my heroic feat was, like, Going back in time and saving like thousands of people. Hero Doctor Who. Mm-hmm. Well, presuming you didn't even have to go in, back in time, in theory, you could save thousands of people and yeah. die a hero's death like now. Yeah. You don't have to go back or forward in time for that. I mean, the idea of a peaceful death is so nice, but honestly, like, does anyone die peacefully? Like, when your body stops, like, that shit sucks. How would you know? You've never done it before. I mean, people fall asleep and they just don't wake up. Like, do, do they have... We like don't is, know. Is like, that, we don't know. Is that a painful experience? Um, best as we can figure, actually, it is. Yeah. Um, from the few studies they've done on the subject, because it's such an unusual it's occurrence that it's way. actually being yeah. tracked brainwaves at the time of a person's death in their sleep. Apparently, you have a really psychotically frightening nightmare as you die. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you literally, can't wait. you are literally scared to death. Something to look forward no, to. No, I have a funny feeling. It's sort of the reverse of what happens if you're awake. When you're awake, your brain takes you to Pleasant Land to deal with the traumatic experience of dying. So you see a bright light. And there's all your family going, "Come on, play with us." Um, whereas presumably in sleep, it's sort of the opposite. Your brain, as it realizes it's dying, freaks out. I don't know. I think if you were awake and dying, you would still have. Some people do, but you have to be a special sort of monkey for that. You have to be a special self-hating sort of monkey, really. Although it still reminds me of the joke of the uh, the seven-year-old, the eighty-year-old, and the ninety-year-old who are sitting around talking about how they want to die, and the mm-hmm. seven-year-old says, "I want to blow up, just a big explosion, no pain, just gone." And the eighty-year-old says, "Yeah, I think I'd like to freeze to death because that's just like going to sleep." And the 90-year-old says, I want to be shot by a jealous husband. <laughs> there you go. I mean, it kind of makes natural disaster tempting, right? Mm-hmm. Because then your, your, you know, fast deaths tend to be quite painless. Yeah. Like, statistic. I mean, sort of, sort of biologically... If, if all your major systems shut off all simultaneously, if you, you know, your nervous system's gone, you know, your stupid organs can flop around like headless chickens for a little bit, but you don't know it if your nervous system's gone. The guy got run over on his bicycle not that long ago. That car going 60 miles an hour. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He was dead instantly. There you go. Wouldn't be so bad. I think it would be more like the anticipation of it. Like, here you see the tornado coming towards you. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh my gosh, we're all going to die. Yeah, also drowning. Like, not, yeah, I not, don't, yeah, I don't think I'd... None of that. that takes a while. Yeah, none of those slow natural disasters. Yeah. Explosion. Yeah. 
horrific mm. accident. Mm -hmm. Does living as though you control your own destiny lead to a more powerful life? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Fun questions. Do you like <laughs> coach? <laughs> Why do we to talk about this? <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Dog. If you had to spend the next two years inside a small but fully provisioned Antarctic shelter with one other person, whom would you like to have with you? Betamax. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am not fast. I am not fast. Here, okay, I know you're going to get pissed <laughs> about this. I got to say this much. I don't know if I could be trapped for two <laughs> years. Kill him. I, 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 I think you bury his body in the ice. I think <laughs> the penguins will feed I, uh, on your decaying flesh. Yes. I, the sea I really lions as well. I really feel that I might, I would probably kill you. Like, so. Who would you take? I would probably take my best friend Jason. <laughs> yeah. How big is this? It said it's small. Small. You said small. Now, is there two rooms? Nope. It does not for that. Oh, yeah, see. There would have Oof. to be. I mean, granted, of course, we would be able to have sex, and Jason and I would not, but it would be still. Well, I don't know. After two years, with no one else, no, not even contact from other people. Uh, he might be desperate enough. <laughs> like, dude, at that point, I might be desperate enough to do Jason. You've never, you haven't even seen Jason. Yeah, I know, but still. But no, I mean, I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, would like What's does that Jason's seem? Jason's last name. Paul. Okay. Yes. Voorhees. Voorhees. <laughs> yes. No, I mean, I guess oh, that. Yeah. Well, I mean, it doesn't say that after the two years you don't go back to your yeah to your significant other and or whatever. Great makeup sex. Yes. Who hmm. would I pick to spend the time with for two years? Though? Who would you you pick? Ah. Oh, really? Who else would I want to spend two years with? Uh oh. Oh jeez! Yeah. Now you're oh, like yeah. an now asshole. I'm, now, I'm just a, <laughs> now I'm just a dick. <laughs> No, I think your point is perfectly valid. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I'm not even arguing your point. And it's about me. The first person, like, without the logical answer, the, the next I'm person in line might be one of my instructors who's always very, like, happy and cheerful. But I think that even they, at some point, after two years of no contact, would no longer be that cheerful <laughs> person. And in fact, they might go completely the opposite way. And then I'd have to finish out the rest of the two years with this person who has probably gone crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, they're a sweet, lovely, almost bubbly, all the time type of person. That sounds awful. Yeah, I would, I'd be like, after a while, I'd probably be like, why are you so fucking happy? Mm -hmm. I will kill We're in a box with provisions. Yes. Shush. Well, now, you, I guess here's my thing, like, box. would you be able to, like, would you have, like, a TV, or, I mean, like... Would you get to know what was happening in the world? Yeah. Well, you know, I don't really keep up with what's happening in the world now. Yeah, but if you had nothing else going on... Yeah, I probably would. Like, like, you'd have to have Netflix. No Netflix. No binge-washing of... of <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, you... Excuse me. You didn't... Think that was did, I was gonna say you didn't see that coming. No. You let your guard down. You put your head down. You did. Mm -hmm. And you got poked for it. Yes, that's mm -hmm. right. You did. I. It, I guess I would want it to be somebody who I actually didn't know that well, on purpose, just so that it would be a reason to maybe get to know them. Like they'd have to sort of already start to be an interesting person, but I'd want to get to know more about them. I was going to say, you realize you're spinning the roulette wheel at that point. Mm -hmm. You never know what you're going to get. That mm -hmm. could be two years of straight hell. It could be. Well, let's face it, how many people have you met in your life that were interesting at first, and then you got to know them, and you're like, no. No. Go away. Go away and die. Bye -bye. Well, I, approach most people, I approach most people with 
the fuck off and die. Mm-hmm. And, tell and then they can prove otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's actually a pretty good uh, pretty good way to approach people. It works out most of mostly. Mostly, I'm like, hey, let's be friends. And then I figure out, oh, I shouldn't have done that. All right. Now let's conclude this with one magical question. Would you rather... (laughs) Ever have I ever. Mm -hmm. Would you rather have sex with a stranger for money? Mind you, completely random. You don't get to find out what you're getting first. Mm -hmm. A decent sum of money. Or not be able to shower, bathe, or clean yourself in any way for a month. Sex. Is it protected sex? I would. Yeah. Sure. I would. Yeah. I was going to say if I. Yeah. Sex. sex. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I look at it this Wait, way. Or like, do I get the sum of money if I don't shower? Sure. Right. If you get the same sum of money. But if I if I don't get to clean myself for a month, I basically guarantees a month of no sex. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, whereas whereas like you know. And no shower masturbation. Yeah, either. exactly. So like ten, ten minutes of just like lay there and get it over with, right. or you know, or a whole month of. And what constitutes showering? You could take a wet wipe. And... Yeah, no, that's why it's like no cleaning yourself. No, no cleaning. cleaning yourself. No cleaning. So you yourself. can wash your hands after eating. Yeah, like or them. taking a shit or. Yeah, that. yeah. Yeah, that's I'll gross. I'll have sex with a stranger as long as there's a rubber involved. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of. We're good. Yeah. Yep. Which Second is so time. interesting when you think about it, because compared to Victorian society, it would have been the complete opposite. True. And the Victorians all died from the plague. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, they didn't. A lot of them did. Well, like, yeah, but let's think about that. The Victorians all died from the plague. Where did we come from? Space. Space. Korea. Korea. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Korea. 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 Cool. Yep, that's where I came from. Well, thank you for listening to another magical episode of Melon's Fruit Bowl. Now you know what fruits we are. <laughs> yeah.